This micro lecture is on oil extractions and size reduction. When you have a chance, please visit the attached link to an article about a robot designed in New Zealand to log trees. Logging has become very automated to make it safer and faster, and as this development continues, it is only natural to think that the majority of logging may someday be done by robots instead of people. Robot logging is a prime example of the mechanical conversion from tree to log. Please take a moment to review this week's learning objectives. As a review, what we will be discussing is mechanical conversions, the first of the four common denominators of the bioenergy industry. Crushing oil plants and oil seeds to make oil has been done for a very long time. This is not a complicated process, which is great because it means it can be done easily. However, unless the process is made to be a little bit more complicated, it is not always very efficient, so there are trade-offs. At its most basic, you literally just squeeze the oil out of the biomass, and if you want to get every last drop of oil, you increase the intensity and the number of steps. What if farmers could produce their own diesel from their crops? This chart makes it pretty clear that canola and flax are the most compelling crops for this idea. There are a lot of people that believe biofuels make the most sense on a farm, and maybe they are correct. A suburban homeowner or an urban resident in a high-rise can't grow enough canola to fuel their car for a year, but a farmer might be able to if they set aside 10 acres to cultivate strictly for their own fuel use. It's worth thinking about. Extracting oil from oil seeds is globally important for rural bioenergy. This table shows the different types of mechanical oil extractors. They can all be manual or automated. Sometimes the simplest solution is the best in rural areas, and rural areas often have the greatest need for what bioenergy offers. This is a screw expeller. Screw expellers are the most efficient mechanical extractor, with 50-90% to 90 oil recovery depending on the level of complexity. They are basically a screw press that moves the oily material forward and crushes it against a grate or side wall. Heat, pressure, RPMs all contribute to the efficiency of the process. This is a ram press, or piston. This is the second most efficient mechanical extractor with 40 to 60% oil recovery, depending on level of complexity. A ram or piston or plate press crushes the oily material into a small hole with an oil drain port. Heat and pressure contribute to the efficiency of the process. This is a gani, also known as a mortar and pestle. This is state of the art in some places. Unfortunately, this is the lowest efficiency mechanical extractor with 20 to 30 percent oil recovery, depending on level of complexity. This is the easiest extractor to implement if you don't have a lot to work with. Chipping and grinding biomass is an absolute requirement for using it in many cases. However, it is also time consuming, energy consuming, and expensive. An easy way to think about it is that the tree or plant spent a lot of time and energy from the sun creating a large solid. So to turn that large solid back into small solids, we have to undo all that work, and that costs a lot of energy. Every time you make it smaller, you have to spend energy and time, kind of like chewing. Chewing your food 200 to 300 times before swallowing would take a lot of time, and it would also probably make your jaw tired from expending so much energy. Same idea. Hog mills are a very common way of grinding biomass very roughly. In general, a sharp, heavy, fixed hammer forces biomass material through a large grate, grinding it into a chunk or a rough chip. This kind of biomass is frequently used for landscaping or for burning. Hammer mills are a common way of grinding biomass very fine. A sharp, heavy, swinging hammer forces biomass through a small grate, grinding it into a sawdust or wood flour type product. Hammer mills are frequently used to produce fine biomass for use in wood composites. Hogs and hammer mills are a type of grinder. 
Chipping is different than grinding because it is more precise. Instead of a hammer and grate, a chipper uses sharp knives and a specific geometry to produce a very consistent chip type that meets process needs. There are several kinds of chippers, gravity disc, horizontal feed, drum disc, etc., that are used in the current pulp and paper industry and also the bioenergy industry. Why do we care about size reduction? Because we need to be able to easily move the biomass around in trucks, trains, ships, and processing facilities. This has to be done with conveyors. Things like belt conveyors, screw conveyors, and pneumatic conveyors are a very important part of any biomass facility. A good example is swallowing food. You chew your food so that it can be conveyed by your throat down into your stomach. If you don't chew your food, you might choke. Same idea here. The biomass needs to be reduced in size so that it can be conveyed easily. When you have a chance, please visit the attached link on wastewater sludge pellets. Wastewater sludge is very hard to use because it is so wet and often so hazardous. However, some innovative people are working around that by using a mechanical conversion and pelletizing it. Take a look and think about ways you might use a wastewater sludge pellet.